This PSA was brought to you by the Peter G Show. <laughs> you may have second thoughts after this show. Uh, don't drink the Foster. <laughs> well, we're really talented. We should get Oscar. <laughs> Just pick out a f-ing car for Christ's sake. No, I'm one. Hi, my name is Peter. Yeah, I, I want. I want. Here's good. Here's good. Ah, yeah, yeah. Adam Perry. I need to get back in the genie bottle. <laughs> from Pennsylvania, you're on. He likes it. It's show time. growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Senor Timoteo, tu rescate a es verdad. Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What would we do? We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. Talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, LA. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. If we do nothing, someday it's going to reach the likes of you. What if this was your daughter? Sound of freedom. It's going to strike a nerve. Hollywood doesn't want you to see it. The media doesn't want you to see it. And everybody's going to see it. So there must be something of truth in there. How the hell is everybody? Wednesday, July 12th, right here. Life of Peter G, the Peter G Show. I'm glad you could tune in. We got a lot to talk about tonight. I just wanted to uh, help. Sound of Freedom, the movie. There's many ways you can go watch that movie, even in your own home. Uh, I suggest you do. It's quite an enlightenment because there's lots of things going on in this world that we are so oblivious to, but I promise you, if it affected you, you'd understand. We're going to talk about all that stuff anyway, but they're killing it. And that's because it's power of the people. People are understanding, people are paying attention and people are starting to catch on to the nonsense that's going on in our media and how awful and what they choose to show and what they don't choose to show or being blindfolded. Anyway, don't get me started, but you're going to get me started. I'm going to get me started because it's Wednesday and tonight we're going to 
talk more about our country because I care. You can take what you want about it and with it and make your own decisions. You say I'm crazy and you say, damn, I didn't know. That's what we're doing tonight and I'm proud to be doing it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Life of Peter G, The Peter G Show, every Wednesday, like clockwork, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. on the East Coast. Right here, God willing. And if you miss the shows, you can always catch them on demand. Watch them at your leisure. We'll get into that in a minute, too. But uh, lots of ga- great stuff tonight. I'm going to get a little more specific on some things because there's so much to talk about In fact, even today, I was almost getting sidetracked because there's things daily that are occurring that make me want to talk about them. It's hard to cram a lot of stuff in in just about an hour, but we do a good job of it or the best we can, and then we continue on. Tonight, we're going to talk about our borders, the mess that's going on down there. And again, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have no idea what's going on, living in different parts of the country and thinking everything's okay because the media doesn't show much about it. But I promise you, there's a lot going on and it's going to affect you and you and your families and everybody more and more as the days go on because it's getting even worse. It's not going away. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to touch on my old favorite topic, climate change. Uh, Ye old climate change, biggest money grab. If you're in the climate change business, you're sitting pretty, I promise you. And we're going to talk about that too, because they've made a lot of believers out of people uh, or, you know, got a lot of people to believe. And I'm going to say that I call bullshit. I do. And I'm going to show you why. Just a little piece is why. And after that, it's up to you. But uh, we're going to talk about that. And if we have time... We we'll talk about Hollywood tonight. A lot of talk about Hollywood. I mean, there's always been, but a lot of Hollywood people stepping out and going, you know, Hollywood is not this sparkly glitter that you see. I mean, everybody, you know, the land of dreams, and you go to everybody thinks Hollywood's all this sparkle and glitter. I mean, if you come down here, yeah, there's there's some of that, but it's it's not all what it seemed to be cracked up and. I want to talk about the Hollywood elite and the underground and the dirty part of it and the who you got to answer to. And, you know, if you want to be somebody, are you willing to make that sacrifice? And there's some people like Ice Cube and a lot of, a lot of people have been stepping out talking about it. I'm, I'm going to touch on it because, it, you know, I, it's, believe me, it's right there under our noses. But again, the media, they're all in on it. They keep everything looking shiny and glittery because it's good business for them, right? But uh, we're going to talk about that stuff. So that's coming up in a few minutes. Next week, before I forget again, also July 19th, Wednesday, July 19th. I'm going to give you more of what you asked for. I've got so much of this stuff. We're going to go on some more other topics about our country. Economics. How the hell are people affording to live? It's getting worse and worse. Only the rich are going to survive this if we don't make some changes, but that's next week and talk more about that and a bunch of other stuff. It might be pretty scattered all over the map, but it's going to have everything to do with living in this country and what's going on beyond our eyesight, unless you're paying attention. And a lot of people aren't and just thinking everything is honky dory and, you know, and it's going to get better, right? It's only going to get better if we, the people step up and start, you know, making as much noise as the one percenters on all the bullshit we're putting up with. That's next week, July 19th. We're going to talk about that. Again, just a reminder, YouTube, my beloved YouTube channel, the Peter G Show, please, if you haven't gone and hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel, please go do that. It's, uh, again, I think I'm going to have a, I think I'm going to have a YouTube-a-thon where I'm going to do one show and we're going to do nothing but try to get subscribers on the YouTube because... Yeah, uh, I, I have to in order to make a difference over there. They're throttling me down. I'm, the algorithms are all against me. And the only way we can change that, because they don't know. They just they just, they just hit the switch and go, you know what? He talks bad sometimes. He talks the truth, and we don't want that. So they throttle you down and go, well, we'll keep him on there. Maybe he'll stay in line, but we're going to make it hard for him, and that's what they do. So I'm asking you, please. 
go to the Peter G Show YouTube channel. It only takes a second and just hit the subscribe button. It'll notify you when the show comes on live. Plus all the shows, there's over 300 of them. You can pick and choose to watch. Now you don't get all the short highlight clips, but again, that's, you know, it's YouTube. That's what I, you know, put a lot of material on there for the full shows. Please do me a favor. And it's free, folks. It's free. It's free. Just do that for me. I'm asking you as a favor because that helps me make some brownie points so I can get things out there. It's a catch-22. But please go do that. And for those of you who like listening and watching the show and, you know, life's busy. You have to go places. you got to go to work. You're driving in the car. You can take the show on the road with you. Put an earbud in your ear. Google Peter G Show Podcast. You can listen to it on audio. It's on 27 different platforms and growing. Your Spotify. YouTube even has a podcast form. Uh, Amazon Music. Apple Podcasts. You name it. There's tons of them. You can pick which one you want to you know, listen to the show on. Pick which show you want to listen to. There's so many different topics. They're all informative. I promise you, you're going to get something out of each and every one. Even if there's several on the same topic, they have different guests with different perspectives. Knowledge is power, people. Hurt no one. Take no shit. Hi, my name is Peter. Go listen to it on podcasts, in the car, while you're driving, at work. Put an earbud in your ear and get through your day. Let me help you get through your day. We share stories. You're not alone. Please go do that, okay? What else we got going on here? Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to get down to business here in a, uh, in a, in a minute. Uh, but first, I want us to uh, hear from my good friends over at Clean Star Products with their uh, fuel additive and money-saving fuel additive, DX1 Driver. So I'll be right back. Let us help you with the high price of fuel. Hello, I'm Ty Thompson at CleanStarProducts.com. We can optimize your engine, saving you money in gas. Here's how. Our program works the same with gasoline and diesel engines. Whether you're using a car pack or SUV pack, the instructions are the same. Add one bottle to your engine oil, and each time you change your oil, add one bottle to the fuel tank each and every fuel fill up. It's that easy. You get 10% fuel economy on average, lower emissions, and increased horsepower. DX1 sells for $2 an ounce, so for just a few dollars a fuel tank, you can optimize your engine, saving you money and gas. Come on, give it a try. It's the finest green grade oil in the world from a California environmental company. You're going to feel it when you drive. Order online today. We'll get it out right away. Cleanstarproducts.com slash shop. That's right, folks. Clean Star Products, they actually have something that works. And that's a big deal. So if you want to learn more from Clean Star Products and their money-saving fuel additive, go to cleanstarproducts.com and write to them. They'll talk to you. It's a little bitty bottle right here, folks. Put it right into your clean oil change. Last the whole oil change. And then every time you fill up your tank, you put one of these little bottles into your tank. And it literally helps you save money and gas. Gives you up to 10% better gas fuel mileage. More Lubricity, cleaner running emissions, more horsepower, less friction. Take care of your engine. Get better fuel mileage. Save money. It makes sense. Tell them the Peter G Show sent you. Let them know I'm uh, actually doing something. But I promise you, it's uh, scientifically proven and it passes all the California Natural Air Resources Commissions here in California. And if it can pass California, it'll pass anything. So go out and... Uh, and, and check them out. And please, like I said, let them know that you uh, saw it here on the Peter G Show. I appreciate it. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, every week I do these shows. And uh, after I do the show, like last week per se, I touched on stuff I talked about the week before. Because after the show's over, people say stuff to me. They write to me, uh, uh, you know. I, 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 after thinking things I should have said that I didn't because I forgot or got busy, uh, it gets, you know, kind of chaotic. We're live. Lots of things to talk about. So little time. 
And uh, so every week I kind of step backwards and just reiterate on a couple of things that I said from last week and just embe- uh, to, to, to a little more icing on the cake because there's a couple of things that I talked about. And this week, as the week progressed, started thinking about a few things and going, you know what? God, I should have said this. I should have said that. And now I'm going to say it. So better late than never. But um, a couple of things again, last month, last month, last week, feels like last month the days just are flying last week i was talking about the gay pride parades and uh and all the things that were going on you know because uh you know it, it was it was gay pride month and i said i have no problem with gay pride you know or gays nothing but what i had a problem was is it's it, it's out of control they're they're being overly flamboyant throwing it there's children at these parades Lots of these guys and you know, girls, everybody's you know, trans, cross-dressers, whatever. They're all waving their freak flag, using it for an excuse. The normal gays just want to be gay, you know? And yes, and be respected and be loved and be accepted. Totally get that. But as I said, those parades were really just that, parades. Just parading a lot of stupidity as, you know, instead of trying to get the message across as for acceptance. And it's really hard to be taken seriously when you do a bunch of dumb shit. But there's plenty of people that do dumb shit. And again, I feel that the ones screaming the loudest for attention are the ones doing the dumb shit because they're the, you know, they're the ones who are a little bit, uh, they need to recheck themselves. But the problem I I, I have or why I want to touch base on this again, because, uh, you know, we had, uh, and I'm only going to play a a couple of seconds of this, but we had Scott uh, Labadio in a video last week. Showing a picture of a, gray, a, gay, a gay pride parade and a child walking by. And a child walking by. Solid Pensacola. All right, in the house. Uh, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked again. <laughs> so gay pride parade was going by. And there's some of these people were just flat out naked at these parades. Adults, males naked here check this out real quick and then i'm gonna make my point i want everybody even you on the left even you gay folks you folks in the alphabet community all of you conservatives liberals i want everybody to look at this photograph it's historical it is so powerful look at it don't look away Do you see this child, six, seven years old? And do you see this? And do you see this fucker, this adult, who walks by and allows these children to see this shit? If I was walking past the school on the other side of the street and I had to scratch my balls because I had an itch with my pants on, I'd be in fucking jail and I'd have a stamp as a fucking pedophile. How the fuck... Are any of you, straight, black, white, gay, or any indifference, whatever the fuck you are as a human being, in society, you look away from that. Or you don't do anything about this. How the fuck am I the only one pissed off at this? He's got a point. He's got a point there. And it I mean, I made this point last week, but there was a phrase I didn't use and I completely forgot about. And that's why I'm talking about it right now, because back in, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if we did anything stupid, I had a friend. And again, normal got well, he's not really normal. He's kind of lost his marbles. But the thing is, my point being, he was in his backyard last year. And for whatever reason, took a piss in his backyard. (laughs) And somebody called, saw him and called the police. Yep. And he got arrested for indecent exposure. Okay. And then you have stuff like this. I'll give you a different example. Here's another picture. Look at this kid's face. 
Is this okay? I promise you that kid is never going to forget this for the rest of his life. He is never going to forget this. This is just at these parades. These these guys, they you know, it's like this is our chance. This is our chance to really see who will bite, so to speak. Put it out there and see who's accepting it so they can, you know. It's just wrong. It's wrong. And again, the word I didn't use was indecent exposure. That's a law. It's a law. But yet, and I don't know who it was that told me this. They said they were at a parade and the cops were there. And the cops are seeing all of this. And they're going, Is, what are you going to do? And they go, I don't care. They don't want to have no part of this. Because all of a sudden, if they say something wrong, then they're prejudiced and, and you're racist and all this bullshit. It's just nonsense. I had to bring it up again. I just had to. I just had to. Had to. Because, again, indecent exposure. But yet, it's okay now for that. But it wouldn't be, just like Scott said, if he just made, made, scratched an itch near a school. Oh, but that's different. No, it ain't different at all. This is worse. This is all over. It was all over. They were doing it everywhere. And people are bringing their kids to it, and it's open. And you can say, oh, the human body is, you know, it's it's just natural. That ain't natural. That ain't natural. And you know it. Oh, we got to stop this bullshit. You have to stop this by, by saying stuff. If you don't, just turn your head. Shame on you because maybe you don't have kids or something. Or maybe you do and you don't, you know, you're not doing nothing about it. I promise you, that kid, you saw the look on his face. Look at the look on his face. He's never going to forget that. It is forever burned into his brain. And he'll remember that when he's an adult. He'll learn to live with it. Hopefully it's not going to psychologically mess him up because, you know, okay, he didn't do nothing bad, but it wasn't good. Didn't need to be there. It's a parade. Should have drums and, you know, marching bands and happy people doing sensible, common sense stuff. But no. Which leads me to my next point, and then I'm going to get off of this. Kind of. Drag queens, I told you, got nothing, no problem with them, except they're shoving it in all our little kids' faces and all that, you know. And again, uh, you know, like like this is something acceptable. I forgot about this phrase that was most commonly, you know, used when I was growing up. It was a definition of a drag queen. Now here's here's a whole bunch of drag queens. Okay, take a good look at them. Some look like women. Some look like really exaggerated women, you know. But here's the catch. They're drag queens, a.k.a. definition, female impersonators. They're impersonating a female. So they're not a female, clearly. But they're impersonating a female because a lot of these drag queens went, but, you know, again, it wasn't just, just dress up and drag. And in person, I feel a lot of them made weekend money dressing up as females and going into these gay bars or cabarets or whatever and impersonating a female and lip syncing to music. And it was a stage show. The key here that I'm making is these women, I mean, men dressed up as women are men and they do it for business not just to be lounging around the house. I promise you, they're not lounging around the house like that. Nor should it be in our schools saying this is just normal stuff. It's not normal. Again, for some, it's business, but it definitely isn't normal. And I wouldn't say it's okay to try and call it normal. It's business. And the ones that want to shove it in our kids' faces, it's like it's not right. They're female impersonators. What is a kid? How do you explain that? It's like this guy is making believe he's a he's a girl for a little while, and he doesn't even try to be accurate. You know, it's you know they they overdo everything because it's business, it's show business, so to speak. I don't get to say that. You know, you don't hear that phrase anymore. I, in fact, I don't think I've heard that phrase since all this nonsense over the past year. Female impersonators. I haven't heard it. They just call them drag queens. You know, they're not queens. They may, and I don't know why they say drag, but, you know, they're men. 
female import impersonators, men dressing up as women to entertain or whatever. But in an elementary school, you don't need that kind of entertainment. You just don't. They got plenty of other things that they could be entertained with instead of introducing them to a 1% fantasy land that 1% of 1% really pays attention to. It's don't. It's not time yet. Sorry, got to get this off my chest again. After the 4th of July, you know, celebrations, you know, all the beer, food, hot dogs, all the things you celebrate and do over the holidays, they were tallying up, you know, on what a beating Bud Light took, uh, Anheuser-Busch, in beer sales. To me, it's like I'm not even it's not not only am I boycotting Bud Light Now I don't drink Bud Light anyway, but there's times when I will. It doesn't matter as long as it's cold. There's very few beers I can say suck when it's cold. You know, it's what, but Anheuser-Busch in general, because this is their baby. They took a beating over Fourth of July weekend. I would you know, I didn't go around to stores to see who was out of beer and how much you know Bud Light was still stocked up, but I'm just all I can say is, good, you did it to your friggin' selves. Believe it or not, Modelo and and all these other beers were just accelerating, you know, because they didn't pull shit like this. So you get what you get. Target, all these other places that want to do all this stupid shit, just don't go to those stores. There's so many other places to shop. Just screw them. I mean, they're, it's not only is the stores carrying the product, but now I can tell more and more that it's like they're almost hiring within. It's like if you think like they think, they're going to hire you. And the whole store, is it's just like a woke, you got woke employees. You know, they just, it, it, it just blows my mind. It's like their little club, shopping our little club. It's like you don't have to shop there. And I know a lot of people that used to like to shop there because they didn't want to go to Walmart because for their own reasons or whatever. But I got to tell you, and now... You know, it's uh, if I'm making a choice, at least Walmart's not shoving this stuff down your throat. They got their own issues too, but screw it. I'm here to make a point. There's plenty of places and stores that are not over the top stupid like this that I can buy the same things from. Promise you. You people got to make a point. You got to let them know. Let them hurt. Because it's us and only us that are going to make the difference. I mean, am I wrong? Well, I, you know, am I falling on deaf ears? Do you not think, uh, do you think, or do you think I'm just out of my mind? Oh, that's all not really happening, Peter. It's not me making up these headlines. And again, they're covering it up anyway. Go shop somewhere else. These people are clearly, again, in the, they've outdone themselves. In, you know, they're top-notch assholes. So let them get what they get. I feel bad for the people like you know, work for Bud Light, the delivery guys who are normal people just doing their job, who are just hurting from it. But you know what? If we don't make a point and we don't stand up, it, this shit's never going to stop. And they, get, they just get more and more empowered. And again, it's such a small percentage and we're letting them get away with murder, literally. So don't go shop at their places. Don't buy their beers. Just stop. Let them get the point. Let them go out of business. Again, they did it to themselves. Uh, last week I touched on, uh, we'll go on this real quick, and then I'll move on to current stuff. Last week I touched on, uh, hun oh, oh, no, I didn't want to say that. Well, the coke, the cocaine that they found in the White House, and they were going to get to the bottom of this, you know. Again, I can guarantee you they already know who's coke. Uh, it was that was found in the library of the West Wing, which is one of the most secure wings of the White House. Only certain people can go in that area. It's not open to public. It's not open to more people than normal. It's, you know, it's not the East Wing, the West Wing. And they already know whose coke that is. And they'll never gonna, they're never going to say it. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. I mean, you know, detective work has been around for, you know, a long time. Fingerprints uh drug test you can narrow it down you can narrow it down and see who was there at any time within the you know and then that's it so you're already narrowing it down by a whole bunch of people because only a select few are, are you know allowed around there and if you drug test everybody well that's going to narrow it down even more but 
fingerprints. You know, whoever left it there is very careless. Like the person who left their laptop, you know, at a at a computer repair shop, the one who dumped a gun that he bought you know, who shouldn't have been able to in, into a dumpster. You know that guy. I'm telling you, son. It's ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying it's Hunter Biden's. I'm just saying it's a real good possibility. <laughs> I mean, who knows? You know, there's look, there's lots of people who do drugs behind the scenes that never you'll never know. You'd never know. I mean, it wouldn't wouldn't phase me a bit if diplomats and everything got together, you know, from different countries and, you know, they go, come on, let's, let's do a line and then get down to some business. But this is inside the White House, our most sacred and most guarded place. And they're never going to say whose it is. So, but we know whose it is. We have a real good idea. But I'm not going to say, you know, I can't say because I can't guarantee it, but. Uh, you know, just just ask around, and then they show all these videos of Hunter sniffing and stuff in you know <laughs> over the balcony at the White House. It's like oh, he's wiping his nose. Now that could be just coincidental, but he looked pretty bug-eyed to me <laughs> over the Fourth of July weekend. Kind of crazy shit. Anyway, but just had to get that off my chest. Let's take a sip before we really dig in. Here's to everybody. Smooth. Mm -mm. I swear. Okay. So I said that I was going to get into a few certain topics um, this show, this week. Even though we're talking about our country, our country's gone to hell. There's so many, there's so many things going on. And it all adds up. That's my point. It's like, it's just, it's, it's just gotten so out of line that everything, it just all adds up. But, um, you know, for a while there, even the media was covering the, 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 the border, which is a, it's a bigger problem than you could ever imagine because it is getting, it's so out of control. People are just coming in daily, thousands and thousands of people. Our border patrols overwhelmed. They got them to, they, they can't talk. They're on a, you know, sh you better not talk or else, uh, you know, your job is gone. And they're, you know, it, it's ridiculous. But yet they're all coming through. And they're coming to a neighborhood near you, I promise you, because those border towns are so overloaded, so overloaded, that they can't handle them. And they're turning their towns into shit. There's, you know, these people have no money. A lot of them don't. They all paid it, paying it to the cartels. They're dropping all their trash. They got no place to sleep, no place to stay. It's just everything, you know, just just dis destroying that path of where they're trying to run into the country. Now, they, they get a lot of people that surrender to the Border Patrol, and then they put them on buses, and, you know, and they're putting them in camps. But there's a ton of them that are just running wild. They're running free. They're just walking through. And let's not even talk about the, fent the drugs that are coming over wide open wide open drugs are so much easier to come through now and you know i promise you you know i talked about fentanyl and how it's killing 300 people a day in the united states and i got all kinds of remarks good and bad because of it but uh i promise you it's killing the people you love people you don't know and it's it's mixing it, they're mixing it with everything we're not going to talk about drugs you know, right now. We're going to talk about people. And I showed you at the open of the show, the new movie that's out, Sound of Freedom. It's all about human trafficking. All about human trafficking. But let's just take a look at... Uh, let's, take, let's take a look. Where are we, Peter? I want you to take a look at uh, one of the border towns, El Paso. This is just a quick video on like what their town is looking like right now. So check this out. This is El Paso, Texas in the United States. This is what's going on under uh, our secure border here, our southern border into Mexico. Look at this goes on and on. It looks like friggin' Tijuana, people. In fact, actually, Tijuana is looking cleaner. 
and better. I, I've seen clips of people in at the borders in Mexico, like Tijuana's and all those areas. They're they're doing better. This is towns that your you know friends, relatives, people live in. Children have to go through those streets. Now I'm not you know all these people that are just they got no place to go. They're camping out, they're just all over the streets. They got no place to go to the bathroom. They got no place to sleep. These are the ones that come through and that we are not taking care of. That you know that skipped trying to get processed and released, which is another joke. But this is what's going on. And and then you start getting crime because people are going to get hungry, so they're going to steal. You know, we as people, normal people, barely have enough to, to to take care of themselves right now because we're going to such shit. And then you got these people, and it's like you know, I feel for there are some good people coming over across, but there's not a but there's a mix. And again, I'm going to talk about a specific, uh, you know, category right now that we're going to be getting into, but. They're coming from all over the world. Middle East, Asia, South America. And let me tell you, a lot of these places are cleaning out their jails and going, we're going to let you out if you go go to America. Guess who's going to get them all? We are. We're going to feel this. This is going to hurt really bad because it's the ripple effect. We're going to feel it. Not feeling it completely yet, but every day it's getting exponentially bigger and bigger. The problem is not going to go away. Not to mention, again, child trafficking, human sex trafficking, again, drugs, all the above. Do you know that this year they can't account, our government knows and can't account for about 85,000 children that have come across the border and have just disappeared into the fabric. I don't say disappeared. They've been taken and just off the map. 85,000 children. Now, it might not hurt you because it's not your child. But where'd they go? You think their family came and got them from, you know, they the people that were expecting them from America? I don't think so. I'd love to think it was that way. But I don't think that's, you know, I really don't. My, my heart and soul truly believes that's not what happened to them. 85,000. And that's what they're saying. So if they say 85,000, dump a bigger number over that. These kids are being raped. Women, children coming over the border. The cartels are running the show. They're running the show. And then they're disappearing. If they haven't been killed, they're going to be eventually. You got, they're going to go into sex slavery, uh, work slavery, you name it. Porn, anything that makes them money, they're going to take those kids and they're going to put them in it. And they don't have a, ch a chance in hell. And then if they're, if they're, you know, they're disposable. You know, organs, human organ transplants, all that kind of stuff. You don't think this stuff is going on? I know you don't hear about it, so therefore, hear no evil, see no evil, but it's real. It's real. Human organ, you know, it's real. And we just put the blinders on and make like everything's okay. If you were in their sho shoes, it's not okay. That's why I say, go check out that movie, Sound of Freedom. I'm pretty sure that you could see that movie for free. If uh, if not, even in your own home, streaming. If not, it will be soon. But uh, it's making a huge impact on people. And the media hates it because they don't want this stuff known. They bury this information. They want it kept on the down low because it's running rabid and they don't care. It's good business for them. So if it strikes the media and they're cutting it down and saying it's all bullshit and it's, you know, it's, lies and all that you know it's true listen to what the media says nowadays and just do the opposite and you'll be you'll be doing yourself a big favor but that's el paso i was showing you then you got uh you know just the trash along the border and this is this is not me making this up this is i'm going to show you this and this is going to be proof i mean just, just check this out all these papers documentation this person Rigo 
Aquilio Garrido Frios, something like that. Honduras invitation. Look at all this. They tried to rip it up and hide it. And then along with it, kids' socks, condoms, 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 lubrication, and more ripped up documents. Kids' shirt. Looks like a sweater. What's their condoms laying all over the border right there at the river's edges and, and kids' clothes laying on the ground if something wasn't going on? I mean, what do you think? Do you think all these people crossing the border are thinking about safe sex? You know, I mean, so they don't, you know, nah. These cartels have it down. They're, they're having their way and doing whatever the hell they want. And, you, and those people, poor people don't stand a chance. They'll be dead. They're, they're, they're just tools. This isn't, you know, I'm not making this up. There's the video. I, again, I can already tell I am not going to get through half of the stuff I want to get through because there's so much of it. Should have known better, but better to have more than not enough. I'll just pick it up where we left off, you know, next week. But this is what's going on with our border. And most people have no clue and think no big deal. It's a big deal because these buses, buses and buses, they're shipping them out. They can't keep them all there. So they're doing the best they can to move them and spread them out over the country at your expense. And you're feeding them. And you're putting them up in hotels and all this stuff. And everybody, you know, is with the humanity and, you know, we should open, we should be okay with open borders. It's like, I'm going to tell you why we shouldn't be okay with open borders. Because, again, most countries, because we don't know who we're getting. I'm sure there's a percentage of good people just wanting to try a better life. But we are getting a ton of people that we won't know. 9-11, you know, is, is just a, a, whether you believe in it or not, I mean, the, the, the theory and the point behind it was we had terrorists in this country. We have a lot of people that don't like this country. And now they can just walk into it and come in. And then eventually down the road, they can do damage. That could be in your town. That could be your family. That could be you. Wrong place at the wrong time. And if you think, nah, yeah, Peter's full of shit. It's like, okay, look at your history. How quickly we forget. Everybody forgets way too quick. And that's the problem. Especially our, our youth. You know, they pay no attention to this stuff. You got to help them along. Wake them up. Because the, the, the bullshit they're being fed nowadays, it is it is like high potency, the highest potency of bullshit you can possibly imagine. More than I ever thought. And they're buying it and they're loving it and they're consuming it. And they're now they're thinking it, living it, eating it, and breathing it. They bought into the bullshit. Not all our youth, but a good portion of them. It's just sad. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tell you, one reason, here's here's one of the reasons. I mean. This is where it all starts getting really kind of weird. And this is why I, I make this point. And just check this out and we'll, we'll get back. Hey, and I'm also going to give you a chance before we close up. Man, we're going to run out of time. If you got something on your mind about the borders and you want to call in, you're going to be able to in a minute. Okay, But check this out. Top news right now. The United States is facing a national security threat as a surge of Chinese nationals of military age illegally cross the U.S.-Mexico border, and Biden seems to be ignoring it. With over 4,200 Chinese nationals apprehended in 2023 alone, concerns are rising over the motives behind this influx and the risks to national security. Questions remain over whether this is deliberate or just negligence, as the media remains silent on the issue. Many believe this trend could be part of a larger plan by the Chinese to pre-position military-age men in the U.S. for potential conflict within the U.S. Likewise, Americans are questioning the motives behind this trend as more Chinese migrants continue to pour into the U.S. through Ecuador. It is imperative that immediate action is taken. I know. You can say, oh, they're just making this stuff up. 
What's the odds we're getting so many male Chinese nationals coming over? And then they make, you know, a lot of them make like, wait, well, we don't speak any English. We speak no English. And what if, what if they're all being sent here by China to be planted all over the damn country? And in case war breaks out, you see what's going on. China wants us. They got us in our sights and we are screwed because they actually have a chance. Because we're under such ridiculousness of leadership nowadays. What if all these people are coming in and then when sh shit hits the fan, they start creating havoc within our own infrastructure? They're sleepers. You don't think this stuff is true? That did, you know, what, they just made this stuff up? This stuff's been going on, you know, they're called spies. And, you know, for, for country and however you want to say it, they're here to do their duty. We're going to send you to America. We're going to finance you. We're going to get you in there. I'm not making this shit up. And I didn't think it up. And, you know, neither did the people that are talking about it. This is, there's a lot of this stuff going on right now. Tell you what, phone's open for the next 15 minutes. 818-259-7983. If you got something to say about our border, uh, give me a call. 818-259-7983. I'll take your call. Got one more video I want to play about our border. It just drives me crazy because, again, I know how much damage is getting done, and I know it doesn't feel like it because it's not affecting you personally yet. But it's affecting a lot of things. And again, they've they've learned how to start crippling us. A, one, it's like pulling out your hair off your head. You take a big swatch and you just yank out a big, then you make, wow, it's like, oh. But if you do it one hair at a time, slowly, every day, little by little, you're not feeling it as much. It's like, oh, it's one hair. Not as much. Well, all of a sudden, you wake up and you're half bald. They're doing it little by little. They're dripping on us, you know, crippling us. You know, so you don't feel it that bad, so you're not paying as much attention. It's not a big punch in the face. Because that punch in the face is going to come all of a sudden, and you won't even know what to do. You won't even know what to do. You're going to be crying because we're going to get screwed. But that's the truth. Anybody have any comments on this? 818-259-7983. I just thought I you know, wouldn't mind hearing from somebody about this. What do you think about this border? Do you believe that there's really, you know, we're, we're in as bad a shape as I say we are? Or do you think I'm just out of my mind? In the meantime, <clears throat> I got uh, even our own government. They're battling. Mayorkas are... I get pissed off even when I think about him. I, I, I'm sorry. I think we have the most ridiculous people running things. And this one from our, you know, our homeland security, he can never give a straight answer. He just has this... You know, he has this way of just not answering a question ever. Not just in this video that I'm going to show you, but ever. He can never give a straight answer. He flat out, they, they, they need to just put him in a firing line one day because he is he is tr just, he's selling our whole country out. He's be part of the whole deal. It's okay. Because he's not going to be ever be hurting. Him and all those people that are all about this, they're not going to ever be hurting. They'll always be protected. It's you, the people, that are going to be hurting. Check this out. This is our government. And thank God there's some people grilling him, but we get nowhere. It's just back and forth banter. We get nowhere. Unless you're paying attention, again, it's us that have to make the difference. But check this out. Let me ask you about, about the, the Chinese nationals who we all saw coming over the border, busloads of them, and then being released in the American interior. What's the, what's the percentage increase of Chinese nationals who crossed the border this year, Mr. Secretary? Let's just focus on maybe the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, the, number of the, the number of Chinese nationals encountered at our southern border uh, has increased significantly. Do you know how much? Over the past. I don't have the precise percentage. I do. It's, not, it's 900% just in the Rio Grande Valley sector. Are any, of, are any of these people who came in this bus, these Chinese nationals, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Um, Senator, if an individual presents a national security or public safety threat, 
we detained them during the pendency but that's of their not, But that's not what I asked. I asked if they're members of the CCP. During the pendency of their removal proceedings. Are, so are any of these individuals members of the CCP? So I think there's indeed, about 70 who came on this if, bus. If indeed they are determined to be a national security threat or a threat to public safety, we detain them pending their removal proceedings. So were any of these individuals detained or were they released into the I don't, of the country? I don't have uh, awareness of that particular group of individuals um, and so you don't know if any of them were members of the CCP, or actually you do know, you just won't say. I, I don't know from the photograph, Senator, to whom But surely you know about, about the folks who, you, you've read this report, you're the Secretary of Homeland Security, you're aware of these individuals. Were any of them members of the Chinese Communist Party coming into this country? Senator, you're providing me with a group of individuals without names, identities, or... So you're not familiar with this incident that was widely reported on at the southern border? Don't you think it's strange that we have busloads of Chinese nationals coming across our southern border? I'm asking you from a, a hostile country, I'm asking you if they're members of the Chinese Communist Party. And you're, you, won't, you don't know, apparently, you won't say. I think he's got a valid point, because you know he knows. He's got to know. That's his job. That's the only job he has. Homeland security. And our border is a big deal. Nobody's doing a damn thing about it. These poor border patrol officers that have to go be down there and their hands are tied. They don't want to do their jobs anymore because they can't do their jobs. They're overwhelmed and they still, and they can't do their jobs. Catch and release. What good is it? We're going to go down in flames if this shit doesn't stop. You have to keep talking about this. 818-259-7983. Last couple of minutes, otherwise I'll just move on. We're going to go over time. I got, I'm got. i only going to be able to get to two out of three of these topics. In fact, I should just finish up with this, but I may just go longer. 818-259-7983. What's your take? You think there's really something going on? Do you think they're doing their job? You think they're doing a good job at the border? The border's fine like they say it is? They always say the border is fine. No problem at the border. I beg to differ. I think there's a problem at the border. A big problem at the border. And unless you speak your mind and keep reverberating these, these things, nothing's going to get done. Because so long as you bow and say, okay, it's okay, and accept it, they're just going to keep walking all over us, our own government, and walk all over us. And then, you know, they're getting benefits that people that, that live here can't get. We're getting fed. We got veterans starving. On the streets. Suicide. Mental illness. Ton of money. All these people coming over, the ones that they, that, you know, give up and get registered. And that don't mean shit anyway, but it gives them free cell phones, free food, money vouchers. Who the do you think that is? I'll tell you, I could use some of that money. I need it. I don't know about you. I'm willing to bet, though, you need it, too. Makes me crazy. This makes me crazy. Last chance, 818-259-7983. Talk to me. You believe in what I'm saying, or do you just think I'm just full of baloney? It's all nonsense, propaganda. I think the propaganda is definitely, but it's not. It's not that everything is, that uh, we're not having any problems. They're making you believe like everything is okay. It's not okay. I'm gonna go on this last topic for the night because I can't get. I'm gonna get two out of three. But uh, I'll leave the phones open because I think this one's going to strike a nerve too. Climate change. I know a lot of people that I'm very close with that truly believe in climate change. They have bought it hook, line, and sinker because it was sold to you real well. Climate change. Years ago, the ice caps were melting. Now it's you know it's too hot or or, or no. But years ago in the '80s, or uh, I think. They told us that we were going to freeze. The whole place was going to freeze over back in the 80s. See, the problem is how quickly everybody forgets everything. Was it Al Gore that was pitching that bullshit? You know, and you wanted to trust your government and these professionals. 
you did. But they're all lining their pockets, people. They get all these billions funded to them to do research and all that, creating these, you know, all these people, and they're just lining their pockets. And then they do years and years of research and putting it out there and, and just dictating on what you should be doing. You got that <coughs> super big asshole, John Kerry. 818-259-7983. John Kerry, anybody familiar with him? Kind of looks like the uh, the uh, Patriots uh, logo in the face. He's the climate czar. He's the one going around with all over the world and talking to people, to the governments about climate change and all that. He's the one flying around on the private jets and living it up, telling you to stay home and don't do things while he's out doing it all in the name of climate change. And I got to tell you, you know, there's China's not not buying into all this climate change, nor is India. These places are building coal plants like they're going out of style. And we haven't even built one this year and we need them. Even if you're making electricity, where do you think the electricity comes from? If you're going to buy into the electric car stuff, which it'll fall apart eventually. But are you buying into climate change? You really think, I got a lot of people that they think, you know, save the planet. Planet has taken care of itself for a long time. So I want you to check out this video and then uh, and then we'll, we'll talk more about it. But here, check this out. How many of you believe in climate change? The people who believe in climate change watch the television and believe what they've been told. Climate change is probably one of the biggest hoaxes of your lifetime. They're trying to give their story, their their lie, momentum by creating chemtrails, create, changing the weather with the heart weather system, with their chemtrails and everything else. They talk about, oh, the sea level's rising. I'd love to know exactly where it's rising because it's not here on the Costa del Sol rising and it's not in Brighton rising. It's all just a lie. If you go to Antarctica, which all these people that are talking about the polar ice caps melting. Yeah, have you been there? I've spoken to somebody who has been there. There's more ice there than there's ever been before. But the mainstream media won't tell you that because they have a lie that they they think they'll get away with. And you've been suckered into it like a good one. It's time to wake up. The climate changes. It's called seasons. Summer, winter autumn and spring. It's done it for 62 years that I can remember, and it's done it for thousands of years before. And I don't remember this hoo-ha during the Ice Age. It gets warmer, it gets colder. That's life. It goes in cycles. But if you take a short cycle, you go, wow, the temperature's risen so much this year compared to last year. That happens. Use a bit of common sense instead of sitting yourself in front of a television like a little baby being forced fed food you don't like, but taking it anyway. Time to wake up to the truth. In 2023, this is the year of the Great Awakening. You'll be awakened to things you didn't know and the lies that you've been told by your governments, by mainstream media, by big pharmaceutical companies and big tech. It's all lies. And if you want to see where the hub of those lies is, you only have to look at the parliaments, the governments. These are all bitches that are paid for by people way up the ladder. These are just puppets. You think your prime minister, your president runs your country? Have another think. They're controlled by people above. And I tell you what, if they let the strings go of Biden, it'd land up where he actually is underground. I mean, if people can't work out for themselves that he's nothing more than the puppet, and the bloke in London who's supposed to be the mayor of London. What a useless excuse for a human being. And you look at Canada, you look at Australia, New Zealand, uh, you look at all these countries that have got puppets in place. Yes, they're eye candy, but they've got rocks for brains and they're just puppets. They don't need brains because they're completely controlled. The climate change is a hoax. And if you don't believe it, wait and see. Wait and see. Time will tell. And all these politicians that are telling you the seas are, are rising, the, you know, they're the ones that have their houses by the sea. And if they were rising, they wouldn't be buying houses on the seafront. Wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey. Makes a really good point, too. I got to tell you, I was getting ready to say, you know, banks, the big banks that loan money for, you know, all these extravagant, you know, projects and things on 
you know, on the seashores. And you think they'd be loaning, making 30 year loans, 40 year loans on things if they were going to be underwater? They'd never do that. They know better. They know better. But they do. They loan it out because all the rich people who can afford it, they're going to they're going to they're going to live on the water. They're going to live on the water. I promise you all the big ones. All the elites, they have places on on, you know, at the water's edge everywhere. Mr. Microsoft does. Old presidents do. So if it was such a threat, they wouldn't be there. But that's for you to decide. 818-259-7983. I got to be wrapping it up here soon. But I just got to tell you, I you know, we're not doing as much damage. We're probably doing better than we ever have when it comes on our part of taking care of this planet or just keeping things down. But cutting us off, taking away all this bullshit. And, you know, again, people don't really realize what it takes to make an electric car. Everybody's just looking at the the one aspect of it. And we've gotten into deeper details in the past about that. But it's not that as efficient as you think. You know, it's, it's not that clean and green as you think. These batteries are destroying everything to get to these batteries, to make these batteries. Lithium, where you t- where you bury them afterwards. You know, they don't, have, they don't know what to do with them afterwards. It's ridiculous. But climate change. It's a joke, people. But the thing is, they've sold you, or not you, all of you, but they've sold a lot of people really well on the whole climate change and bad, you know, us Americans and bad. It's like, you know how polluted India and China is? And they're not stopping. I got to say that because they're big, you know, nations and they do a lot of it. And and they're not even lifting a finger. They're not lifting a finger like we are. They're the ones, you know, profiting from us buying into the whole deal, hook, line, and sinker. Ford is going to go broke. They're building all this electric truck bullshit. Nobody wants them. It's not practical. It doesn't work. You know, some people jumped on the band. It sounded exciting in the beginning. I can see how you'd buy into it, too. This is our country. You know, why would they lie to us? Man, oh, man. I hate to say it. I really do. It's so shameful. But they're, they're looking out for their selves. We're just ants. We're just little ants. Whether we live or die doesn't mean anything to any of the elite. doesn't. There'll always be more. I don't know about you, but, you know, those who have families and want to live and want to have a a decent life, a peaceful, decent life, if we don't speak up, they're just going to keep on running everybody over and dictating these rules. All these people, they started their own organization that nobody voted for. And, And all of a sudden, they're controlling the whole world now. Soros and all these assholes. Who gave them permission? They got a lot of money. They self-appointed themselves. They know better. Now, I guarantee you there's plenty of people who shouldn't be doing it because they don't know any better and they're not as smart or this and that. But these guys are not doing it in our best interest. I promise you. They're doing it for them and only them. They'll squash us in a second. It doesn't matter to them. They're doing it for our benefit. Stop buying into this crap. So I want you to hear from the guy who who invented the Weather Channel. He was the founder of the Weather Channel. He was a meteorologist, a scientist, all that kind of stuff. And then he started the Weather Channel Network many, many years ago. So, I mean, he must amount to something. He must have some kind of credit, street cred. But here, check him out. It's nice to be on CNN. Hello to all your viewers. I resent you calling me a denier. That is a a word meant to put me down. I'm a skeptic about climate change, and I want to make it darn clear, Mr. Kenny's not a scientist. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did, because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a lot of cable news. I'm talking now. Hold on just a minute. I'm not done. And CNN has taken a very strong position on global warming that is that it is a consensus well there is no consensus in science science isn't a vote science is about facts and if you get down to the hard cold facts uh, there's no question about it 
climate change is not happening. There is no significant man-made global warming now. There hasn't been any in the past, and there's no reason to expect any in the future. There's a whole lot of baloney, and yes, it is. it has become a big political point of the Democratic Party and part of their platform, and I regret it's become political instead of scientific, but the science is on my side. I don't think we're going to come to a conclusion about the topic right here. What I do wonder, oh, though, I know is when not, you see... Because you the... wouldn't allow it to happen on CNN, but I'm happy well, that we, I got on the air and I got a chance to talk to your, uh, to your viewers. Hello, everybody. What there I do, is no global warming. What I do wonder is when you see the government, when you see NASA, when you see other institutions say that 97% of climate scientists agree, do you think they're making it up? I, I, what I don't understand is how you well, square that. Well, that's a manipulated that. figure, and let me explain it to you. Uh, this, the uh, government puts out about two and a half billion dollars directly for climate research every year. It only gives that money to scientists who will produce scientific results that support the global warming hypothesis of the Democrat Party of position. So they don't have any choice. If you're going to get the money, you've got to support their position. Therefore, 97 percent of the scientific reports published support global warming. Why? Because those are the ones the government pays for, and that's where the money is. It's real simple, but that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't make it true. That only makes it bought and paid for. The money goes in circles. I'm not a scientist. So I'm not going to try to refute you Boy, on that's the facts. The truth. I'll simply so say that the vast majority... Please stand back from this, from this issue and let the two sides be on the air. There are 31,000 scientists who have signed a petition that says it is, it is not valid, that my position is correct. And we'll keep battling, and uh, we, we will prevail in time, but I don't know if we'll do it in my lifetime. I do hope viewers are Googling the data you're sharing, because I do think it's skewed. I have to say that. I want to well, ask you all, about the weather. No, it's not true, and I, I hope you will uh, go to the websites that present the papers that show that none of this uh, alarmism about ice and heat waves and drought None of it is happening. Is the Weather Channel part of the conspiracy? Well, the Weather Channel has bought into it. As I say it, they've drunk the Kool-Aid. <laughs> but so is all the media. That's no big surprise. All the media has bought into it. No big surprise. Sad. See, and we as people watch the TV and buy into all this crap. And you say, well, it's, why would they say lies? That's the hardest part right there, because everybody says, well, why would they tell us lies? What do they have to gain from that? Control. They control us. They tell us when to get back in the house. They prove that over COVID. Told us what, you know, what to do. Put on masks. Don't take them off. You need to get this a bunch of times. They're still. Yeah. It, 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 I don't. Even, I don't want to get shut down. I, in fact, I, I question. You know, what what will happen after these shows? Every time I do them, but let's face it, people control. They're all controlling us, you know, or, or controlling a lot of people, not everybody. But the thing is, we're all in this together. So what's it's happening everywhere. I had a picture I talked about last week about Frank Zappa. This is from the seventies, from the seventies. The man was a the man was a genius. Frank Zappa had it together. He was above the crowd. He was a little bit strange to a lot of people, but that's because he was just, he was above the crowd. But I told you about a picture. Let me go get it. I told you about this picture that I found. It's a picture of a toilet up on the second floor with a giant tube going into the TV. So basically, he pretty much says it. The TV's full of shit. For entertainment purposes only. I mean, he had it way back then. What makes you think it's any different? The news thrives on disasters and they don't want puppy stories. So this is his depiction of television and, you know, media. It's all full of shit. And, you know, I'm sorry. You can say, well, what about you, Peter? What about me? That's for you to decide. I got a lot of people that think I'm full of shit. And I got a lot of people that say, well, you know, there are some good ones out there. There are. But we've lost our way. Big time. We've lost our way. And I'm hoping that, you know, I reach a few. 
that'll help make a difference to get on board and start going, you know what? I can't just live through life with the blinders on. I'm going to have to start paying attention because it's affecting everybody. I'm only about 10 years into it. I was just minding my own, thinking everything was all right, but it's really blatantly obvious. I'm Again, you know, I'm no scholar either, but it got so obvious these past five, six, seven years. You know, I was starting to catch on things, but it's now it's just, they do it in your face and they, they're so brave. They just put it in your face and you're still buying into it. They're really brave. They just keep on telling you until it finally sinks in and brainwashing. We're going to talk about that another day. Anyway, I'm not going to be able to get to the Hollywood stuff. No time. I'm over. Oh, I'm way over. I hope this makes a difference in your life. I hope it it maybe, you know, hits a nerve something because uh, this is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. It saddens me a lot. I bring this to your attention and I say these things, not because I have nothing else better to do. I can go on to a lot of things, but I think it's important. I feel like if I don't, shame on me. Because again, I too did not understand at one point in my life about 10 years ago. I didn't really care. Well, I can easily tell you I care now. Better late than never. And, I'm, and I, I want it to make a difference to benefit you and me. We, the people. I hope. That's it for tonight. I want to remind everybody, I want to thank you for watching. Please, please go to my YouTube channel if they don't shut me down. And please just go and hit the subscribe button, please. It's just, I need to make a difference over there. They're making it so difficult for me. It's an endless, endless battle. You can't be seen if they don't allow you to be seen. You can't grow if you can't be seen. But if you know to go there, you can hit the subscribe button. It's free. And make a, and let's make an impact. One sub subscription at a time. Let's grow. Help me help you. Please. And don't forget, I love every each and every one of you for watching the Peter G Show, Life of Peter G. But if you don't have time and you're driving and you're at work, take the Peter G Show on the road with you. Google Peter G Show bot podcast. Pick which platform you want to watch it from. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. There's, there's so many. Uh, Amazon Music. There's 27 platforms right now and growing. You can take the show on the road with you. Put an earbud in your ear and at least listen to the show. It's kind of hard with sometimes when I show videos and things like that, but you can always catch the show on demand when you have the time. But there's some great information and it'll keep you entertained with a purpose. I'm not just blowing smoke up your asses, I promise you. Sometimes we do some pretty stupid shit, but it's blatantly obvious stupid stuff. I will never take our current lives and these events that are going on and fill you with baloney. I don't make this stuff. I'm just bringing it to you, sharing the stories to get, make you aware, hopefully bring awareness. I hope, but I thank you for it. That's it. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. My name is Peter G. Thank you for watching Life with Peter G, The Peter G Show. I think I'm going to close out one more time with the Sound of Freedom trailer because I think you owe it to yourself to enlighten your your mind and knowledge in that aspect of children and and human trafficking and what this movie represents i think uh i think you have nothing to lose in all the gain by seeing what's going on on the dark side of of this country and the whole world and um i hope that you'll pay attention i gain nothing from it besides trying to help the helpless all right again my name is Peter G. Thank you for watching Life of Peter G, The Peter G Show, every Wednesday, like clockwork, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. on the East Coast. As always, I love you guys, and uh, peace out. We'll see you next week, and we're going to continue on throughout this month with this stuff, so I love you. I don't think I can do this job, Tim. As soon as I lay down, all these see are those kids' faces. How long have you been doing this? 12 years. 
How do you do it? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Senor Timoteo, tu rescate mi es verdad. Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What will we do? We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. If we do nothing, someday it's going to reach the likes of you. What if this was your daughter? Show, Peter G. Show, Divorce Dad, Single 